I'm not snapped. I just feel good. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Yeah, it's gonna start. Are you nervous? Cause you should be. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, The Infuso. And a lot of people ask me, V, are you a Batman channel or a wrestling channel? To which I answer, yes. And that's why today, I'm going to engage with both sides of my audience and talk about that one time that the Joker wrestled in a TNA ring. Or more accurately, how Sting wrestled as the Joker in a TNA ring. Sting is often referred to as the icon, and it's not hard to see why. The man has accomplished more in a month or two than most aspiring pro wrestlers could ever hope to in a lifetime. He's won world championships, main evented starcades, and bound for glories. He even got the chance to compete on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. He's beaten some of the greatest names to ever enter a wrestling ring. As a matter of fact, his arguable greatest foe, Hulk Hogan, has never beat him. Now think about that for a second. Hulk Hogan, wrestling's proverbial Superman, the guy who has rarely ever lost a major match, has never once beaten Sting. Ever. He's had memorable feuds and unforgettable matches against the likes of Ric Flair, Rick Rude, Lex Luger, Vader, Great Muda, Mick Foley, Randy Savage, Jeff Jarrett, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, Christian Cage, the list goes on. These are just some of his top accolades. I would like to give you the full highlight reel, but the full highlight reel is his full resume. And nowadays, at 63 years old, the guy's still out here doing stuff like this. The man is insane. An insane icon, some would say. And some did say during his TNA run, as that became his moniker when he went through this weird change in his career. Interestingly enough, the man who got over with an audience by going mute and impersonating the Crow got over with a different audience by impersonating the Joker and never shutting the fuck up. Later into his TNA career, Sting decided to drop his comic book character turned big screen legend gimmick for a comic book character turned big screen legend gimmick. The man once inspired by a once in a lifetime performance given by an incredible actor who sadly passed on after the making of the movie was now inspired by a once in a lifetime performance given by an incredible actor who sadly passed on after the movie. It's incredible how similar but different this all is. Now the whole Joker Sting thing is a pretty divisive time in his career. I feel like most fans either love it or hate it. There's really not that much of an in-between. And I will tell you how I feel about it in just a moment. This all started when Sting feuded with Mr. Anderson for the TNA World Championship. And what I think is one of the most underappreciated feuds that company ever put together. Anderson, ever the opportunist looking to get an advantage on his opponent and looking to reclaim the company's top prize, decided to play mind games with the Stinger, becoming a reflection of his past. Anderson went on a crusade trying to tear down and absolutely bury the Stinger, managing to not only recreate his look, but also mock some of his career-defining moments. Even going so far to face off against the not-so-great Muda, Sting was being put down as he was made a joke of every week on Impact. Even bringing out some of his co-workers and colleagues, people who have shared a locker room with Sting, and attempting to get them to bury him, until Sting stopped being laughed at and started laughing along. And then he just never stopped laughing. It was also during this time period that TNA was facing the same corruption WCW had, at the hands of the very same people as well. Sting was watching history repeat itself over again. And rather than go down that very same sequence of events, he opted to step out of and stop that cycle. Well, either that or something inside him snapped. And his sense of sanity became a senseless insanity. Sting took on a let's be nice and say Joker inspired look, looking more and more like a demented clown with each passing week. But you know, they say dress for the job that you have. And as he was each night's entertainment, I would say that this is pretty spot on. When I say the man looked like a clown, I'm not just talking about his face paint, like obviously he looks like a very terrifying and confused clown, but just his mannerisms and his expressions, the way his face would contort, it was like watching a cartoon character come to life. Now make no mistake, while Sting may have acted like a court jester, he still fought like a knight. This old man in makeup was a total goof, but he was still scary enough to intimidate man half his age and twice his size. And despite blatantly being 
once again, let's be nice and say creatively motivated by the Joker, he did at least add his own flair to it. Like, all his attires looked like they belonged in the Joker's actual wardrobe, but they seemed like the outfits that he just kept in plastic bags and never worn. You know, I can't sit here and identify which specific Joker this is, but I can imagine a Joker wearing that. He looked Joker-esque, but it felt just different enough to be its own thing. Look, all I'm saying is Joker Sting donned the red suit in 2011. Joaquin Phoenix didn't even put his on until 2019. Now, I don't want to go point any fingers here, but I think Todd Phillips has some explaining to do. How dare he rip off the guy who's ripping off the material that he's trying to adapt? Although, on a serious note, the merch is just a little bit spot on. Nervous? Uh, yeah, I am. I am nervous that you are going to be sued. For better or worse, this sudden change in stability ushered in a new era in Sting's career. Being that Sting was already 26 years into the business, I think that that's a shockingly late time to have a mid-career crisis. It's like, shouldn't you be past that by now? Nonetheless, you gotta credit the guy for doing something new. Especially when no one was asking him to. What he had worked, people liked it, people loved Sting. He could have gone by the rest of his career just on nostalgia alone. And I have to applaud them for trying something new when nobody was asking him to. This random lunacy did lend to more innovative and creative segments in Sting's career. We were seeing a whole new disturbing side to one of the company's fan favorites. Sting was absolutely outrageous at the time, and it made his time on the card that much more unpredictable. You never really knew what he was going to do next, and whether you loved or hated it, you couldn't help but pay attention to it. It also gave Sting the opportunity to showcase his comedic chops, which up until this point in time, uh, were never really shown. Don't get me wrong, the guy had always had incredible energy, whether it be in the ring or on the mic. He's an entertainer through and through, and he's highly entertaining. So I knew going in that this gimmick would be fun, but I didn't expect it to be so funny. You know, Sting during the height of his babyface runs was always talking with the fans, was always having a good time, but here he was a full-fledged comedy act. And you're probably concerned because my red doesn't match. It's clashing, but it's Versace. <laughs> You're crazy. Thank you very much, Karen. You're an ungrateful son of a bitch! What hurts most are my feelings. Eric, you... you cussed at me. Let's do some vitamins now, okay? Oh, Come here. No. Oh. One for you. Oh. Oh. Swallow it. Oh. Does anybody have a water here? I need a bottle of water, somebody. Oh. Hey! This new next step in Sting kind of felt like he received a Joker blood transfusion. Joker Sting was kind of like what would happen if Jim Carrey played Heath Ledger's Joker. I know that sounds oddly specific, but I assure you, it's spot on. It was also different seeing someone masquerading around as the Joker being hailed as a hero. There are a lot of interpretations of that character, but in very few of them is he actually a good guy, let alone beloved by those around him. And in contrast, throughout Sting's illustrious career, I can't remember him ever being truly reviled, even on the rare occasion he was healed. Despite Sting's apparent madness, there's still method to it. As he remained focused and motivated all throughout his hilarious mental breakdown, going after and feuding with Hulk Hogan and all those he was associated with, reigniting one of the most famous feuds of the 90s. Except whereas back then, Sting aimed to take down Hogan and stop his hostile takeover, Sting now wanted Hogan to stand up and help him stop his own hostile takeover. Now, if that sounds a little bit dumb, uh, that's because it is. And uh, to make matters even worse, Sting somehow charmed him into doing just that. He also added a few world championship reigns to his resume, and he even managed to regain Dixie Carter's seat of power. While Sting was always heavily featured on shows, he was getting even more screen time now. And in terms of his in-ring work, Sting still had it. Which should be no surprise, as the guy still has it now. Sting was still putting on solid matches. They were a far cry from his best, but they also weren't teetering on his worst. The guy could still go, it's just, I don't think he was having the most memorable moments in matches, given the matches that were given to him. You know, you're not exactly putting on five-star matches when you're in a tag team match against Aces and Eights, or when you're having Hulk Hogan's last match. Although he did have some pretty good outings against Mr. Anderson and Bobby Roode. But even in saying that, those matches aren't exactly making Sting's top ten. I don't think this gimmick gets the praise it deserves. Both TNA and Sting deserve a little bit of applause for trying something so different this late in the game. 
The truth is, the Sting gimmick wasn't broken, so why fix it? Even now, Sting is pretty much doing the same thing that he was doing in TNA before he became the Joker. And that's the same thing he did in WWE. Which is also the same thing he did in WCW. It's kind of timeless, it just works. And people are still captivated by the guy. You didn't need to do anything different with Sting, but I really appreciate that you did. They gambled, they took a risk, and for some fans it paid off. Personally, I think it led to a lot of fun creative moments that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So I am a fan of Joker Sting. But there's a little bit of an asterisk there. I like Joker Sting, but I know it isn't the best Sting. This isn't the definitive Sting. This isn't the Sting that people will remember for wrestling millennia. But judged on its own merit as its own entity, I think it was a highly entertaining period in Sting's story. With all that being said, if you think this was a highly entertaining video, and would be interested in seeing a follow-up of all the Batman-inspired gimmicks in wrestling, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, Ta-ta for now! I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Remember, the only thing that's for sure about Sting... Ah, oh, never mind. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember... If you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Man! You guys are unruly! Get it together, would ya? Come on, are we a team or not? Oh my god. No.